Knowing how to structure your folders and files in React is quite difficult because React doesn't give you any help. They leave it entirely up to you how you want to do this structuring. So in this video, I'm gonna go over three different examples of folder structures in React, and these are gonna be for beginner, intermediate, and advanced users. But just because a folder structure is beginner or intermediate doesn't mean it's less good than the advanced version. For example, smaller projects definitely benefit from these more beginner approaches to folder structuring, while larger enterprise style applications are going to benefit from the advanced section. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're talking all about React folder structures. Now to get started, I'm gonna be covering the beginner focused project layout, then we're gonna go into intermediate and then we're gonna go into the advanced one. But like I said at the beginning, make sure you watch each one because smaller projects definitely benefit from a simpler, more beginner focused approach. Now for most people when they get started in React, their source folder is gonna look something like this. And the whole crux of this video is gonna be focused entirely on this source folder because really all the other components like your public folder, your node modules, and any package JSON and ESLint files, those are gonna be very project dependent, but the source folder is where all of your main code is gonna go. And you see here that we have three main folders inside of the project. We have a components folder, we have a hooks folder, and a tests folder. And this is very indicative of lots of React projects. They just shove all their components inside the components folder, any hooks that you have go in this hooks folder, and then everything else just kind of sits inside the source folder. So you can see we have like utility functions like format date, format currency, we have our CSS inside of here. And inside this components folder, you can see we have components for everything from like a simple button all the way to more complex things like a form input or like the new to-do modal or a nav bar. So everything from like super complex things like the entire homepage all the way to simple things like a single button are going to be inside of this one components folder. And when you're working with a smaller project, you know, like a simple to-do list like that, this project, that's just a simple to-do list, it's fine. You only have, you know, 10, 20 components. They can all fit inside of this components folder and it's pretty easy to understand what's going on. Also, you can see we have our hooks separated out, which is just kind of a handy feature to have all your hooks in one place to make it easy to reference those in your components. And that way you know which are components and which things are hooks. Now, this is, like I said, good for smaller projects, but as you start to scale up, this components folder is gonna get really unruly because you're gonna have so many components shoved into this one single folder. It's gonna be hard to know what are pages, what are small components, what are stateful components, presentation components. So with all of your components in one place, it's hard to distinguish what is what. Also, you'll notice we only have a couple folders. So things like our you know, format currency and format date, these are like library methods or util methods. These are all shoved inside of our source folder. And if you get a lot of utilities, such as tons of different formatters and different things like that, this source folder is going to become very large very quickly, which is a huge mess to work with. Another important thing to note is also our context is in here. So our to-do context is inside this source folder and our test folder here contains test for everything all in one folder. So you can see we have our test for all of our components our test for our hooks and so on. You can imagine there's more tests inside these folders. But this is one thing that I see in a lot of beginner focused projects is they put all their test code in one location and then all the rest of their code in a different location. So it's kind of hard to know which tests are associated with which files because you have to like go into all this different nesting and your tests are not anywhere near your components. So if you have test, it's generally better to put them next to the actual code that it's testing. So it'd be better to have your test in this components folder or in this hooks folder, for example. But again, since this is such a small project, it's fine because there's only like 20, 30 files total. So it doesn't really matter that they're laid out like this. And when I'm making small, you know, little to-do list applications and so on, this is how I format my code generally. But let's say you wanna step it up to the next level to a slightly more advanced project, not super large, but still quite a bit larger than this toy application. To do that, you're gonna to wanna to jump up to an intermediate level code structure like we have here. As you can see, the first thing that immediately jumps out is we have a lot more folders, and also there's a lot less files inside of our source folder that aren't in a different folder. And this does two things for us. First, it helps separate out all of our different concerns here. So we have assets, components, context, data, hooks, pages, utils. So we can separate out all of our files. And also it makes it so our source folder is a lot cleaner. When we open it up, we just have a few really basic files that have to do with like our index and app page. And all the rest of the entire code for our application is inside of these folders. Now, first I wanna go through the folders that are new, and then I'm gonna go through the older folders as well. So the first new folder we have is an assets folder. This contains things like images, SVGs, global CSS, any type of asset that you're importing that's not like actual JavaScript code, that's gonna go in the assets folder. Pretty self-explanatory, but it's great to have this folder because it means you can store all of those files in one location so they're easy to access wherever you need them. Next, we're gonna go down to our context folder. This folder here has our auth context or just any context you can think of. So anytime that you have a context that you wanna have, just put it inside of this context folder right here. 
Also, you'll notice inside of these folders, I have the test directly there. So my test file for this off context is directly inside this test folder. And that's going to be for every single one of my different folders. I'm gonna have the test directly inside the folder for those tests. So they're as close as possible to the file it's testing. Next, we're gonna go down to a data folder. This is a folder that's great for containing like any JSON data that you have. So like if you have a store, for example, you might have a store JSON file, or maybe you have some constant variables that don't change. You can store all those in this data file or this data folder, super convenient. Books folder, this is exactly the same as before, but now we have our test localized inside this folder. This page is one I'm gonna skip over real quick because it's the largest change by far. And then we have our utils folder. And this just moved all those utility functions that were inside of our source folder and it put them in one location so that it's easy to save them in one place and access them other places. Now, an important thing about this utils folder is the code I put in here is generally very small and simple functions. And generally I want them to be a pure function. Now, if you're not sure what a pure function is, I have a full tutorial covering it. I'll link in the cards in description. But the general idea behind a pure function is that no matter what input you give it, it always gives you the same output for the same input, and it doesn't have any weird side effects. So it's really just a small function that is very simple to understand. That's what's in that utils folder. Now, moving on to the pages folder, inside of here, we have some changes as well as inside the components folder, and they actually link to each other. So the thing about our components folder is now you can see that it's broken down into different folders instead of being just a bunch of files. And each of these folders has you know, a purpose. So here's all of our form components. Here you can see we have all of our UI components like a modal and a button. And then we just have our random nav bar component as well. So the reason we're doing this is because now it structures our components folder because as it gets larger, we make more components. They're going to be slotted into these different folders, but also you'll notice we're missing some of our components. Like where's our to-do list? Where's our to-do item? Where's our form for our to-dos? None of those live in our components anymore. And instead those live inside of our pages. So each page in our application is generally going to have some components to it that are shared and some components that are unique. And a lot of the shared components are things like a checkbox or things like a button. Those are shared between all your pages. But if we go to our homepage here, for example, you can see things like our new to-do modal, that doesn't show up anywhere except for on our homepage. Same with our to-do form, our to-do item, our to-do list. All of those are specific for our homepage right here. So it makes sense that we only include those components inside this home page. And that's the idea behind using this pages folder. You have one folder inside our pages folder for each page on your screen, for example, home, login, settings, and sign up. And then for each one of those pages, you put all of the code that is unique only to that page inside of here. So our to-do context is only used on the home page. So all the code for that is inside this home page folder. Same thing with login. We have things like our login form and a hook for using login. Same thing for settings. We have a settings context, a settings form, a use settings hook. All that stuff that is only for that particular page goes inside this pages folder. By doing this, you're able to break down your components and your pages and separate them from one another. So now your components are like general small components. A lot of times these are just presentational components. They don't even store any state. You just give them data and they render out some output to the screen. They're really straightforward components and you use them everywhere in your application. A lot of these things are like UI components and form components and things like that. And then your pages, this is for each individual page on your screen. So that means that you know, this new to do modal, like I said, it's only used on the home page. So we're not storing that in the components folder where you could use it other places or where it can get confused where it's used. You know, for a fact, since it's in this folder, it's only used in one single place. Another important thing about these pages is you'll notice it contains everything. It's not just components. It's also hooks, it's context. It's everything that is only for that page. Even if we have like utility functions that are only used on our home page, we put them inside of this home page folder. And this is great for like medium sized applications where you have, you know, a handful of pages, maybe 10, 15 pages. It's pretty easy to handle. And each of the pages are fairly unique from one another. That is where this type of structure is going to be perfect. It takes it away from that beginner focus structure where everything was shoved in like two folders. But now we have separated out folders for everything. And it's pretty easy to follow exactly what's going on. But as you scale up to really large enterprise style applications that have tons of different features and tons of different additions, you'll quickly run into problems with this structure. And the number one problem you're going to run into is more and more things are going to be shared across multiple pages. So now as you start to add more and more components and more and more features, you're going to have to start pulling things out of your pages and putting them into components so they can be shared across your entire application. And this is a bit of a problem because then as your application grows, your pages are going to become more simple and your components folder becomes more complex, which is the problem we're trying to avoid with this, which is where we need to move into the next step, which is the advanced folder structure for larger applications. And here we come to the final version, which is the advanced version. And this version is very similar to the previous versions, but the one big difference you're gonna notice is this folder called features. There's a few additional folders, but this features folder is the most important. 
Now we're gonna cover all of the folders here, but this features one is the one you wanna keep in your mind as the most important. And we have our assets folder, that's the same. We have our components folder, exactly the same. Context folder, again, the same. Data folder, the same. Skip features for now, go into hooks, which is also the same. We have this new layouts folder, which is specifically for components that deal with laying things out. So like nav bars, side bars, footers, those kinds of things that are used across a lot of components and a lot of pages. That's what this layouts folder is for. This is optional. If you don't have that many layouts, just put them in your components folder and it's fine. But if you have a page with lots of complex layouts, using a layouts folder is really helpful. Now we have this lib folder. This lib folder is really important because in most projects you're going to build, especially larger projects, you're gonna pull in a lot of third-party libraries. Whether you're using like Fetch, which is built into the browser, you're using Axios, or any other third-party library, you're gonna to wanna to implement that in your code. And generally, you're gonna put that in many places in your code. But what if you need to update the version of that library? Well, now you need to update it all over your code base. The idea of this lib folder is essentially an implementation of the facade pattern. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the facade pattern, I have a full video covering it. I'll link in the cards in the description for you. But the idea is you take a library, for example, Axios, and you wrap the entire library in your own code that exposes the library in its own way. So you essentially have a facade that you put over top of this Axios library. And then you use that facade everywhere in your application. So now if you need to update Axios, you only have to update it in one single file in your application and everywhere else is just going to work. So this makes working with large scale applications way easier because instead of changing it in a million places, you change it in one single location. Now we're gonna skip pages again, go down to services. Services is about integrating with an API. For most applications, you're gonna have some type of API you're gonna integrate with. So services is where you put all your services for calling your API, for example, like logging analytics, for, that's what this is doing. So you put all the different service-based API calls inside this services folder, and you can use them across your application. And then we have utils, same as it was before. Now I mentioned features, pages are going to be our big change. Let's open up pages real quick and you'll notice one interesting thing is we no longer have folders. We just have individual files for each of our pages. For example, home, login, project, settings, sign up. Super basic, super straightforward, and it's really easy to work with. So how did we go from that folder structure of pages to this file structure? The way we did that is by implementing features. In application development, generally what you're gonna do is you're gonna add new features to a website. You know, the user is like, you know what, I liked your to-do app, but now I want the ability to like list my to-dos under a project. So now you need to add a project-based feature. And this features folder is all about taking all of the code for a feature and putting it in one single place. So let's look at authentication, for example. Authentication handling, sign up, login, user data, all that kind of stuff, it's all in this feature folder. And you notice in this feature folder, we have another set of folders like components, hooks, services. And if you remember, those are the same folders we're using inside our source folder. So features is almost like a mini version of your source folder for each one of your different features. So in our authentication, we have different components, we have different hooks, and we have different services. And those are the reasons that we have these three folders. But if we had, for example, assets or context data, we would have folders for those inside our authentication. So in your application, think of all the features that you have in your application, create a folder for it in this features folder, and then inside that features folder, it's an exact replica of your source folder minus the features folder, obviously, because your features won't have their own features. So you're just kind of duplicating that file structure to make everything as laid out as possible. And you do this with all your different features. For example, here we have components and services. Here we have components, context, hooks, and services. And our to-dos, we have some assets, for example. So each one of our different features are going to be inside these feature folders. And all the code for those features is going to be contained inside of this one single folder. And the important thing is we have this index.js file. And the idea behind this index.js file is that we export all of the things we want to use from this feature from this index.js and then we only ever import from this index.js file right here in our application. That means if we want to have some, you know, a bunch of components in our to-dos but we only want to be able to export a couple of those components to be used, we export them in this index.js and then you just make sure you never actually import from any of the other files or folders inside this features folder. This is a great way of encapsulating all of the logic for those features in one single location instead of having it all spread out throughout your entire application. Now, everything to do with to-dos is right here. Everything to do with projects is right here. And this makes it easy to add new features. You just add a new folder. Or to change a feature, you just go into that folder and make those changes. And everything outside the features folder is really straightforward. For example, our hooks, this is only going to contain hooks that are like global, used across the entire application, every feature. For example, every feature could use the local storage hook. And same thing with our lib here. This is only for libraries that are used across all of your features. Same thing with services, utils, and so on. 
because most often these outside folders for like utils, lib, and so on, they're gonna be really small, pretty straightforward. And 99% of your code is gonna be in this features folder. So each feature is going to have its own code right there, which means you don't have to worry about a lot of global code. That's the hard thing with making a good folder structure is a lot of time all your code just seems to be global. It's just imported and exported from all over the place. But with a structure like this, we have kind of self-encapsulated features and they only export certain code and they only import certain code. And they don't communicate with each other from within each other, which makes it really easy to keep them separated from one another. And then finally, when we go to our pages, this is just going to be taking our different features and implementing them where they belong. So our pages are actually super straightforward because again, all the logic is inside of our features. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, just because this is the advanced folder structure doesn't mean it's the right folder structure for you. This is really only applicable if you have a large scale project. Because if you try to implement a small to-do list application using this folder structure, you're gonna have tons of empty folders and tons of wasted space and complexity when you could just do it with that beginner focused folder structure. So really you have to think about how large is your project and which of these folder structures is going to best work for your project. If you enjoyed this video and want to take your React skills to the next level, check out my completely free React Hooks course linked in the description below. It covers every single React Hook as well as how to create 30 different unique custom hooks in React. So make sure you check out that course linked in the description below because it's completely free. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.